Hey everyone, it's Supra and I thought I'd do a video tutorial on the AMF codec plugin for OBS Studio. This has been a plugin that's been in development since about a few months ago. So it utilizes the hardware encoder, the VCE, on the AMD GPUs uh, that have been in the AMD GPUs since the HD7000 series. Um, we're now in version 3.4 on the Polaris GPUs, which can record Quad HD at 120fps, so they're pretty powerful. I think it's a feature on the AMD cards that have been poorly utilised with things like Plays TV, that while I think it's been successful, it's only highlights and it's not for people like me that want to record full gameplay um, or high quality gameplay or anything like that. So what this codec does is obviously it's for OBS and it allows you to do that. Um, OBS and this codec are free and open source and they are very heavily supported. There is a new version for this codec like every few days, um, which is a good thing uh, for everyone but kind of a bad thing for me because it means that if I want to make a video tutorial I just have to hope that not many things change otherwise my tutorial will be obsolete and I'll have to make a new one. So we're on uh, Reddit just here. Zamar often posts his new versions to the AMD subreddit. I should also say that you should look at the prerequisites for this and the FAQs to figure out what your, your GPU is capable of and what uh, things you need to install beforehand before you go ahead and get started with this tutorial. If you know that you don't need to do any of those things then that's fine. Um, the quickest way to get to the latest version of Zamar's codec is to go to zamar.com. I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing that correctly by the way. Go to zamar.com on the front page there's a big old banner and 10 times out of 10 he has the, his latest version on there. One thing I should note is that if you're on um, Windows 8 or 10 and you have smart screen enabled it might pop up asking, uh, saying that it's malicious software, etc. Just say more info and then go ahead with the installation. I should also say that the AMF codec is included with every new version of OBS now since I think point sixteen point two. Um, but you can install the latest version of the AMF on top of that uh, OBS installation and it should be fine. So now on to setting up OBS. Now, I'm not going to do an OBS tutorial, there are plenty of those out there. But OBS Studio isn't a difficult program to get around. Honestly, there are simple uh, settings for simple users and advanced or advanced users. And I'm going to just cover the simple ones first. Studio modes, um, if you're going to be streaming and you have, you know, different things like weird um, backdrop pictures uh, that you want set up in different transitions and that, then, you know, enable that. Uh, go into settings and then go into output. Now, output modes. You just select that and simple, it'd be that by default. And um, if you're just recording, then you know select your path. Um, you have your recording qualities. Um, select the AMD hardware encoder and then your recording format. And then you're pretty much done. I don't think that you'll have any problems with this. Um, and obviously it's the same with um, streaming. And then you just go into your hotkeys, press F2. Eight or whatever one, I just keep it F8 between DxTory and all my recording programs and um, if you're hotkey to record and in advanced you probably won't need to change these things but I prefer to put on i44 for uh, the colour format if you're having any problems just leave it on NV12 um, especially for streaming, leave it on NV12 and then apply and that's it but if you're having problems um, then we can go into the advanced so, encoder, H.264 encoder, AMD, advanced media framework. And you have a bunch of um, presets here. I do have a slightly outdated version. Hopefully it doesn't look that much different uh, from the newer versions. But you have your reset to defaults one, just in case you've messed up settings too much and you need to reset them all. So you have recording, high quality, indistinguishable, lossless, Twitch and YouTube. Now for um, streaming, Obviously I would just uh, stick it to Twitch and I was streaming yesterday, uh, I was streaming Battlefield 1 and I found these settings to be pretty good. Um, obviously your quality is more dictated by how much uploading speeds, how good your internet is. Um, so I had it at 3800 and I didn't get any frame drops, I didn't get, um, I had very low CPU overhead, it was at like fifth, it was like less than 5%. Um, I was streaming in 720p at 60fps and it was really good. That you would always have it too and quality preset I would have that at speed. Um, just an observation, 
um, quality preset, it, it doesn't actually dictate quality, it dictates the encoding speed. Uh, onto the recording tab, we have um, your recording format, just leave that on MP4. Um, obviously keep that, and I should probably say that I have the view modes on Expert, it might be on Basic, um, but I stick this on Expert just to have a little bit more um, freedom with settings. I keep that on quality, it tends to be fine, and all of this cube quality presets, um, I just leave that. Uh, VB buffer, um, I think he recommends on his FAQ to put the fullness up to 100. Um, you can experiment with that if you want, I don't know if it'll make much of a difference, but there you go, frame skipping and HRD disable, keyframe, I left that um, by default, and B picture pattern and B picture reference, these are two important settings that were controversial in the earlier versions of the AMF. With the outputted video file they caused a lot of uh, frame drops and it was just unusable and it was because of these two settings here so you would turn B picture pattern all the way down to zero and disable this if you're having any problems it does say if you mouse over the settings it gives you actually a little um, box a little window that indicates what it actually what it impacts uh, so slightly improves quality but lowers encoding performance and this is what I have found I've always left it off I've never tried to enable it just because it's, it doesn't have any impact on quality that I've noticed anyway that I've wanted to, to enable it and see. I've just left it disabled. So, you know, you can try it if you want, um, but I have found problems with it in the past, so I've disabled it. Deep blocking filter, definitely enable this for recordings, otherwise, you know, it's just going to be a bunch of blocks in your uh, recording. And all this other stuff I leave as default. Um, on the audio tab, put on to 320 for recording. Um, or 160 if you're streaming and then onto audio you just leave that 44 and obviously make sure that you have the correct audio device and if you're recording uh, your mic or whatever one thing that I should note is that this you aren't able to split the audio streams like you can with the XTORI so just keep that in mind if you want to maybe remove your um, your voice later, you can't do that, it's not like the XTOR, you can't split the streams or, yeah. Um, onto the video tab, so you've got your canvas resolution and then your scaled resolution, make sure these are whatever you want them to be, recording I'd have them at 1080p, um, by Cubic and Langsos, I've not really seen that much of a difference, I don't think there would be that much of an observable difference at 25% scaling, so I've always left on Langsos. Um, and then you've got your frame rates. I might just leave that in 59.94. I've found that to be stable. And hotkeys, F8, uh, that's just how I like it. And then I think I've already went over this side of things, so yeah. Then you press OK, and then when you open up your game, hopefully, once you press F8 or you press start recording, it actually does start recording. <laughs> if you if you're having problems where you're pressing start recording and it doesn't then that could be to do with your settings, maybe you've messed about with it too much or maybe you've not um, specified what the right path is or something like that so just go back and make sure that you have it set okay now I'm going to compare two recordings here one is with the indistinguishable preset of the AMF and one is with UT Video on DxTory. I did try and sort of replicate the settings with uh, DxTory, um, like not waiting for available buffer and stuff like that. But obviously, DxTory is going to be ahead in that regard. That it is, it has a lot more settings available to you to optimize quality. And what I will tell you is that uh, the file size of the AMF recording 892 megabyte, whereas the video size or the file size of the DxTory with UT Video Codec was 5.02 gigabyte. And yeah, you will notice that they're basically exactly the same um, in terms of frame rate performance, in terms of video quality. It is very, very similar. It is undiscernible. It is great that we can finally um, have a sort of alternative to Shadowplay. So I hope this video tutorial was helpful for you. If you have any questions or any problems, leave them in the comments. I am not tech support and I didn't make the codec or OBS. So there's only so much that I can help. Um, but yeah, leave your comments. Please rate the video and check out my other videos.
And that's all for this one. I'll talk to you later.